Hi guys, this is Ashley back with another podcast episode. We're about to get into some things. Um, so the first topic we gotta discuss is Nicki Minaj teases some lyrics from Pink Friday 2. Um, I don't believe that she has dropped a name for the um song that she basically um quoted. And then she also takes her cheap shots at Cardi B. Nikki said, I just want to watch him do his push-ups with his sweats on. Every time he hit it, he going to nail it like a press-on. See, that's a double entendre because she got that nail um, press-on company, okay, that she just um, announced. And then she said, when I write his D, the only time he getting his flex on. Hit it from the back with my pumps and my dress on, okay? Now, this sounds like it's going to be like the get on your knees version on Pink Friday 2. Okay, remember she had like a get on your knees, a sexy um, song on um, the pink print. Okay, this sounds like it's about to be like a similar song to that. You know, it may not sound the same, but it's going to be like a sexy type of song. Maybe Riri or Ari are on this record. Or maybe she going to do something like Rich Sex. Remember that song? And she kind of was just like, you know, talking about the D, but she didn't really have any type of features on that song. Okay. I feel like a lot of people kind of slept on that record, but everybody talks about their, you know, coochie and all the records now. So if it was somebody else rapping it, it probably would have went like number one. That's what all the other female rappers talk about. Um, not only that, she tweeted, wasted all that money. And guess what? She's still here. Okay. Um, she posted that meme by Tisha Campbell of her singing, I'm still here. Some fans are taking it as she's talking about Titanic Records and Cardi B who have tried to take her out. If you guys remember, um, you know, Nasal E did a recent interview with Tasha K and said how, you know, the industry tried to dismantle the Barbie. Okay. That's what Hazel E said. And, you know, Clown Ye said a few months ago that Cardi B was an industry plant here to um, push Nicki Minaj out. Then Nicki Minaj also posted her Payola 5 stats, 2.7 billion streams. 174.1 listeners, um, 130 hours in 182 countries. Okay, so congratulations to the queen. And um, a lot of people feel like that was another shot at Cardi B because Cardi B has yet to post her stats like she usually does. Cardi B always talks about her stats. You know, her records live in the top 10. Um, not recently, but, you know, back when the payola package was in full effect. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like Nicki Minaj has the queen of surgery, um, cricket nose, shook. Okay. Um, Loose Tooth is scared of Pink Friday too. That's why she's been quiet. Um, Titanic Records did try to take Nicki Minaj out. But instead, they realized they can make more money with Nicki Minaj instead of taking her out because Cardi B not doing the job. And that's why they decided to have her on the Barbie soundtrack and they got that scammy nomination. Now, um, some fans feel like Nicki Minaj should not try to push the narrative that Titanic has tried to take her out, even though, you know, Clown Ye, Nasal E, Jesse Wu, and several other celebrities like Russ and Cupcake um, have basically confirmed Nikki wasn't lying. Um, you know, Nicki Minaj did thank them earlier this year for giving Barbie World a push. Okay, she said, Ooh, Titanic, don't make that slay. Okay. Um, and so fans feel like it's kind of hypocritical to post that, you know, you're still here when you were thanking Titanic Records for giving you a push. But here's the thing. You know, I think Nikki, when she was thinking Titanic Records, she was being a little bit sarcastic, especially since Plastic Face has been basically flopping all year. OK, um, so I think she was trying to get underneath Cardi B's skin like, you know, Titanic is giving me a push and you haven't gotten a push in years. 
okay? Bozos did not get the push that Barbie Roll got, okay? And y'all could say it was because of the movie, but she spent $2 million on the music video. Did they spend $2 million on Barbie World? Probably not, okay? She's a minute out of her own mouth that, you know, they spent $2 million on, you know, the Bozos music video. And then how, um, you know, it got like 11 million in radio play the first week um, playlisting. It had a Megan Thee Stallion feature, which nobody cared about. So at the end of the day, Cardi B got to take her out. And Titanic Records joined forces with Nicki Minaj because Cardi B is not making them any money. Okay, so the truth hurt. Now, moving on to Doja Badu. So Doja has been crowned. The queen of Paola 5 rap. She sets a brand new record as the most streamed female rapper consecutively in the past three years um, on Paola 5 rap. Um, in 2021, Doja was the number one stream female rapper on that platform. And she was number one in 2022 and 2023. Uh, well, Doja has a Paola Fi deal, though, okay? Um, that's why she breaks all the records. Notice how she breaks all these records, but never on any other platform. Never Amazon, never Apple Music. Did 6K in per sales. We're not going to let that go. No, nope, we're going to bring that up because the kitty litters need to be humbled, okay? But you're not going to forget about them 6K in per sales. He has a Paola Fi deal. Same thing with Champagne Thickums. Nikki needs to get one, though. Nikki, um, hopefully she gets some radio with this album, okay? She gonna need the radio for the songs to remain stable on the chart, okay? Um, because Doja, she just been breaking all these records. Um, Nikki needs some radio. I don't know if she got a single she gonna be, like, pushing for the next album, but she needs radio. She needs playlisting because Doja has been breaking all these records and it's not really deserving if you're doing 6K in per seal, in my opinion. No shade. I like Doja. I like Agora Hills. That's one of my favorite songs right now. But Doja Cat has taken Criminal B's spot as the queen of Paola. She has. She gets the best Paola in the world. Okay? I don't know who Paola is better, her and Champagne Thickums. But you know what they got in common? You know? Never mind. We're not going into that. Now... Scratch Off has curated a um, freestyle cipher for different rap artists, mostly D, F, and Z listers that nobody really cares about. Um, but she also dropped a few bars in her freestyle, and she's taking more shots at Ice Spice. I'm like, damn, I thought you said you didn't want to beef anymore. Didn't she say that in her XXL um, interview that she don't want to be known for her beef, but she continues to take shots um, and be a thirst bucket and brag about being a side check. The hate ain't working as you can see. Bitches blow me, I'm still hot. And my nigga so damn rich, I could probably quit my job. Been putting boots on hoes, so how a bitch gonna take my spot? Nigga not been jumped off the porch. These hoes can't even get off the shelf. Difference is without a nigga, I would still have every wheel. Every house, every chain, every bag, everything. Always niggas on my body, never bitches on my brain. Half these hoes can't even rap. Me and mine like Christmas Eve. He can't wait to open box, like this shit under the tree. That's why you don't see your babe, cause she know she got the call can't fuck with me bitches spade i'm drinking this bottle i inspired to be as delusional as scratch off okay first of all who the hell is shelved you the one with the least push ice spice get a bigger push than you what are you talking about talking about somebody shelved who is she talking about is she talking about super peach because she definitely can't be talking about ice spice but when she says half these hoes can't even rap, she's definitely talking about Ice Spice, okay? That was a direct shot at Ice Spice because Ice Spice, um, no shade, she's not the best rapper, and she has not improved. And y'all can say, oh, well, she only been in the game for a year. Well, she's already starting to kind of fall off, okay? Thankfully, that Dolce Cat tour is saving her, but she has not had a hit in a while. Okay, Delhi was not a hit to me. 
um, I think her last hit for me was the Princess Diana remix. And it was the remix because Princess Diana did not chart until Nikki hopped on it. Let's be very clear. And y'all can say, well, it's only been a year, but look at Glow Stick. It only been a year for Glow Stick and she don't have no career. Cardi B done ruin it. So a year can take you out. A year can take you out the game if you're not working and you're not being strategic. That's why Sexy is 10 months pregnant and she on stage twerking because she knows that, you know, somebody can easily come in and take her spot. But as for Scratch Off talking about quitting her job because her man take care of her, like, girl, sit down. You're a side chick. 21 average probably does not want you to fully retire. Okay, the only time I see you doing that is if you get pregnant or knocked up. You are not the main girl in your relationship and you're definitely not the main girl in rap. So sit down. Moving on to Ice Spice, I definitely got to um, comment on this. This is very interesting. So Ice Spice posts all the artists, her top five list of who she listened to on Payola 5. She got Lana Del Rey. I like Lana. She got Champagne Thickums. I'll pass on that. She got Little Dookie and Piercing Boy. No. Callie Uchas. Oh, I like Callie Uchas. I don't listen to her that much, but I do like Callie Uchas. But I find it interesting how everybody was saying that Ice Spice um, is a barb, right? Y'all was saying that the whole year. No, 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 no. No, the barb's got to come to the front of the congregation. Y'all was saying that she was a barb. The whole year. And she not even top five on Ice Spice Payola 5 list. Champagne Thickums is number three. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He been putting out trash all year. And he's number three. He been putting out trash all year. No, Ice, Ice, Ice. You got to come to the front of congregation with the barb. Explain to me this, okay? You had two Nikki collaborations, like, so besides Princess Diana, um, even Barbie World is not even on her list, but besides Princess Diana remix, maybe, or the original run, um, you wasn't even listening to Nikki like that? Okay. I'm just saying I peeped. I peeped. I wonder if Nikki peeps, because y'all was saying she was a barb. If y'all didn't say that she was a barb, I wouldn't be talking about this, but y'all was saying she was. So, this is very interesting. This is very interesting. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And I'm not even mad at the list, okay? Because those are very popular artists, and she should listen to herself the most. I'm not mad that she put herself number one or she listens to herself um, more than any other artist, okay? A lot of artists are probably like that. But Nikki. Was your main feature all 2023. You talked about Nikki in every interview. How Nikki inspired her. And then on top of that. Um, you followed the Nikki Minaj formula. You was dressing like her. Um, you know you paid homage to her earlier this year. And then she not even top five. Mm, that's just interesting to me. That's just interesting to me. I wonder if this was all like. Um, you know, a strategic move for Ice. I don't know. Maybe she's using the Doja Cat formula. Let me pretend like I'm a Barb and the Barbs will support me. <gasps> could be onto something. No shade. No shade. But I really could be onto something. Ice Spice has been playing chess with Nikki the whole fucking time. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. Now, as we have seen this week, um, the Beehive, not all of them, but most of the Beehive have been a little bit threatened by Nicki Minaj's perfume line, okay? And yes, I said threatened because they have been dissing Nicki Minaj all week about her perfume being in JCPenney. Um, you know, some of them are disguised as Cardi B fans. Um, they have been lying, saying that the perfume has gave them rashes. Um, and Nikki has been accused of liking a shady tweet in regards to Queen B. Um, the tweet says Nikki Minaj's Pink Friday perfume is getting positive reviews from the general public, 
cough unlike a certain perfume that was released recently. Now, the only person that has released perfume recently um, is Queen Bee, okay? Okay, she put out that um, perfume line that was made in Paris. Um, I think it's $165. Um, I did not buy that. I bought Pink Friday. The reason why I did not support Queen Bee's perfume line, even though I wanted to, was because I saw a lot of mixed reactions. Some people said it's really a perfume for the 40 and plus. That's what they were saying. They said this is a perfume you would get if you were going through a midlife crisis. Some people said it smelled like rotten peach cobbler. That's what they were saying in the streets. This is not me. Some people said that it did not smell too good. I saw certain people do reactions to it on TikTok and they weren't too impressed. So $165, like that's a lot of money to spend on perfume if you don't like it. You know, if you don't like the Nicki Minaj perfume, which, you know, I think Nicki's perfume smells good um, because I did buy it. Um, you can eat fifty dollars. I'm not gonna let go of one hundred sixty five dollars. I want a refund. No shade. Um, but that's what the streets were saying, and I just don't trust Queen B because I feel like she'll put out anything. Like she just wants to find something outside of music to stick. Since Ivy flopped, didn't do so well, and I think that a lot of the um, Beehive are intimidated by Nicki Minaj. Because they see how Rihanna has surpassed um, Queen B when it comes to making businesses outside of music. And they don't want Nicki Minaj to do the same thing. That's what it is. That's what it comes off as. No shade. It's really no shade. But when it comes to Beyonce doing business outside of music, and she's been in the game longer than Nicki Minaj, she's never that successful at it. Okay. No shade. So I think they're a little bit threatened because Nicki Minaj has been selling out and Queen Bee has not sold out. Okay. And her perfume is from Paris. Why isn't the Beehive buying it? Okay. And then on top of that, her um, documentary movie is not doing so well. Okay. It, it's only going to do 20 to 30 million opening weekend. You know, the Charm Says Races did 100 milli opening weekend. What's going on with that? So I do think that the Beehive is a little bit envious of Nicki Minaj. And I don't care how y'all feel about it because y'all wouldn't be dissing Nicki if y'all didn't feel some type of way. It's not the Barb's fault that Ivy Flop didn't do well. Y'all did not buy it. Y'all did not support it. How comes House of Delusional, I mean, sorry, House of Darion didn't do well, okay? So like Queen Bee has several businesses and none of them are really that great. You know, she's not on Kim K or Rihanna's level when it comes to the businesses. So they're hoping that Nikki doesn't get on that level and surpass Beyonce. Now, I don't believe that Nikki liked that shady tweet. I just want to say that I think that the fans made that up. Okay. They're hoping that Tina or somebody from Queen B's team sees it. They made it up. But I believe that. Um, the Beehive is, you know, very worried about Nicki Minaj and her doing her other businesses like the press on nails, the perfume. You know, if she come out with something else, they're going to be very upset. And I like Queen Bee. I want to support Queen Bee's businesses. OK, I wish I can support Ivy Flop, but it's just something I would never wear. I wish I, you know, I bought Heat, the perfume, her first perfume, but I heard it smelled disgusting. So why am I going to waste my money? It's really no shade. I want to support Queen Bee because she is the queen of music in my eye, but she just don't make good products. That's not our fault. Now, I just got to talk about this quickly. How the hell is Tyler putting out an album before Normani? <laughs> No, wait, wait, wait. This got to be a prank. Please tell me that, you know, um, Tyler's not putting out an album tomorrow. And um, Normani hasn't even put out her debut album. Normani, listen, I hate to say it, you know, I like Normani. I am a Normani fan, but her career is over. It is over. I mean, Coco Jones, Victoria Monet, Tyler, like, 
it's too many girls out here, Normani. It's like, you coming back in 2024 is not going to cut it. You might as well just retire and be a wag. Um, you know, stick beside your football player, even though he might be cheating. Because at the end of the day, like, that career is over. I'm sorry. There's just no way she can come back. Like, you got too much competition. And then Ariana coming back next year is over. Normani is over. It's over. I'm sorry. I like Normani, but I don't know. I don't know how she's going to come back. It's so many girls out, and they making them good music. Okay? Nobody from Victoria, Tyler, or Coco Jones is making shitty music. And Victoria Monet is using your choreographer. You know, no shade. So, and she killed it for the On My Mama uh, music video. But anyway, that's some hot tea on Patreon. Link will be in the description. And I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.